Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on functional analysis. In this uh, video, we are going to prove uh, we're going to prove that open balls are in fact open sets. We're going to prove that open balls satisfy uh, our definition for an open set, and we're going to f uh, prove that closed balls uh, satisfy our definition for a closed set within any org metric space you like. Uh, so uh, these arguments really are going to uh, are going to. Um, show the for the first time the real importance of the triangle inequality. Basically, the triangle inequality is going to prove these are uh, prove both of these arguments for us. Uh, so let's just set the scene. Uh, so uh, we have some metric space X D, uh, which consists of a set. So let's draw a little set here, which is our big set X, and we've got some metric space in there. So uh, let's let uh, little X be a point in this metric space big X. So you just pick some little x here and we're going to let r be some random uh, real number greater than zero. So I'm just saying let x be any point in the metric space and let r be any radius. Uh, so we're taking any general open ball uh, basically in this um, in this metric space. So the ball centered at uh, this little point x r. So I've just picked there some random uh, open ball in our metric space XD. And now what I want to show, I want required to prove uh, that uh, ball XR uh, is um, is an open set, basically, is what we want to prove. An open set. Okay, so uh, we know that open balls, ball XR, uh, is all, is that they're, they're always non-empty. They always, at the very least, they always contain the center point. So they are non-empty is not equal to the empty set. Uh, so, uh, pick any old point y, which is an element of this open ball here. And what I want to show is that y is an interior point. So you pick any point is an element, or it, pick any abstract point that's an element of this open ball. And what we want to show is that it's an interior point. So we want to show that there exists an epsilon neighborhood. And if we can do that, since y was just general, and our picking of the uh, open ball was just general, we've proven that all open balls are going to be uh, open. The reason is that we've proven uh, that all points within an open ball uh, will be interior points, which is the definition of an open set. Okay, uh, so uh, so pick Y as an element of the ball um, center the X of radius R. Now, the distance between X and Y will be some fixed number. So it could be zero. If you've picked by, if your y was equal to your center point x, then it will be equal to zero. But it's some number uh, which is less than r. So we know that it's less than r. And call this number, let's call it a fixed number, let's say it's h. OK, uh, now uh, if we draw a picture, we have our ball here uh, centered at the point x. We have some point y here, and the distance between them is equal to h. So basically, the motivation is that we could make a ball of radius this bit left over here, which is r minus h, and we could take that ball around y, and that ball would be completely contained within um, within the uh, larger ball uh, b x r. Okay, so that's what we aim to show. Uh, so um, take the ball at center at the point y of radius r minus h, and the motivation for that is that we've got this h distance from y, so now what we're going to do is uh, take the remaining bit there, which is distance r minus h, and we want to construct that ball around y. So that is equal to all points, uh, let's say uh, all point z, which is an element of big X, uh, such that the distance between uh, y and z is less than r minus h. So what we want to prove is that if we take any abstract point of this ball, we want to prove that any little z, which is an element of uh, the ball, around uh, centered at the point y of radius r minus h, we want to prove uh, that uh, z is also an element of the ball uh, centered at x of radius r, because that's what we want. That's what we need to show. We need to show that this that this epsilon neighborhood where we're considering r minus h to be our epsilon is completely contained within our original set, uh, the, which is the ball um, center the x of radius r. So we're trying to show that any abstract point y has a ball around it, which is completely contained within this larger ball. So this is the ball center the x of radius r. Okay, uh, so just move this up. Uh, so uh, where do we go next? Uh, well, 
if z is an element of uh, b x r, then that would that would mean that the distance between x and z uh, was less than r. So if we can show that the distance between x and z is less than r, uh, then we're in business. So what are we going to use? We're going to use the triangle inequality. We're going to use the fact that the distance between x and this point z, uh, so if I just draw a picture to show you what we're doing, uh, I don't know why I've drawn those axes, but if we have a ball like that, uh, center the x, and then we have some point y, and we're constructing a ball like that, and we're taking any point z in here, inside this ball, what we want to show is that this distance between x and z, uh, we want to show that that is less than the dis that they're less than the radius of this ball. And the way we're going to do that is to use the triangle inequality and say that uh, the distance between x and z plus the distance between y and z has to be less than the distance between x and z. And if we can show that the distance between x and y and y and z added together is going to be less than r, then we're in business. So by the triangle inequality, the distance between x and z, this, um, this line of the triangle here, uh, is going to be uh, less than or equal to the distance between x and y uh, plus the distance between y and z. So that is true because of the fourth axiom of uh, metric spaces. Uh, so uh, the distance between x and y intuitively in the picture sense is this one here. And the distance between y and z, if I have a final colour, let's uh, use this black pen here, uh, is equal to this. And the distance between x and z is equal to this here. Now, uh, we know that the dis we know what the distance between x and y is. That's a constant. That is what we've been calling h. We also know that the distance between y and z must be less than r minus h because z was an element of the ball centered around y of radius r minus h, uh, which implies that the distance between any point in that ball and y is less than r minus h. So we know that the distance between y and z is less than r minus h. So if we uh, add on, if we use this inequality here and we add on to both sides the distance between x and y, so the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z is less than r minus h plus the distance between x and y. Uh, so that's just, we're just using the ordered field properties of the real numbers. If you have, if this inequality is true, then it implies that this inequality is true. If we just add a real number to both sides, the inequality is still true. Now we fill in the fact that dxy is just equal to h, and we get that the distance between, uh, well, on this side we'll leave it as it is, we won't fill it in there. So we'll get that the distance between x and y uh, plus the distance between y and z is less than r minus h plus h, so is less than r. Now, uh, so we've got that the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z is less than r. We also know by the triangle inequality that the distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and h. Now what we apply is transitivity of the, ordered, of the ordering. Uh, and uh, that implies that if this, uh, so pens out again, if this thing is less than or equal to this thing, well, this thing here is equal to this thing here, and this thing here is, abs is strictly less than r, so that implies that this thing here is less than this thing here, which implies uh, that uh, the distance between x and z is less than r, which implies uh, that z is indeed an element of the ball at uh, center the x uh, of radius r. Okay, so that proves, uh, therefore, uh, that the ball um, centered at y of radius r minus h is completely contained within the ball uh, uh, centered at x of radius r, which implies uh, that we have found we have found a, a ball. Uh, around any point, any abstract point y, which is an element of this ball, which is completely contained within it, which implies uh, that uh, y is an interior point, an interior point of bx, y, x, r, and since y was just any old point, uh, that implies that this is true for absolutely all points, because it was just any old abstract point. I did not say it was any specific point, uh, so that implies that b x, r is an open set, uh, since all points are interior points. So excellent, we've proven there uh, that um, open balls are indeed open sets. In the next video we'll prove that closed sets are indeed, um, uh, closed balls rather, are indeed closed sets.